Hey everyone, my name is Firefly and we're playing video games together today. Uh, today's game is called I Too Can Grow. Uh, it's an indie game uh, and I've actually I've never played it before. So what we're about to do today uh, is is we're gonna we're gonna experience this story about depression together. Um, I just want to put a, put out a warning ahead of time. Um, I, I don't know what sort of themes are going to be in this game. Um, just understand that if you're having a heavy day, um, this, this might get your brain going a little bit more. So just make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, and just remember that I'm here for you too. Uh, but yeah, let's do this. Okay. Another day. You slowly open your eyes and look at the clock. 5.30 a.m. An hour left till your alarm rings. You sit motionless in bed, staring at the ceiling. Not this again. For you, sleep just isn't sleep anymore. It's an escape. The night is your refuge. It's the only time you truly belong to yourself. The only time when no one seeks you. No landlord chasing you for rent payments, no company hounding you with calls, no friends and relatives asking how your week has been. You don't even have to talk to anyone if you don't want to. This is why for the past couple months you've been going to bed later and later. You can't remember anymore how going to bed before 3 a.m. feels like. Nowadays you're perpetually tired. What even is the point? Okay, we're getting up though. We we clicked the get up button, so that's something. Just a little more. I don't want today to begin. It's not uh, it's not like right now you're even doing anything productive to be to begin with. You're just lying in bed thinking. This may have started a couple months ago, but these thoughts have been in your head for years. Get up. You want to get up so badly, but for some reason you just can't. If your ex was here, they'd tell you to just get over yourself already. Um, I mean, that. I have so many thoughts about that. Um, that you're so lazy. Oh, hey, why is it so hard to just get out of bed? I guess that's why they left you. They never understood. With a sigh, you finally get up. I don't, okay, I, I, can I go somewhere else? Bathroom, okay, I can go to the bathroom. Also, I'm kind of glad that they broke up because it doesn't sound like that X was really healthy. Um, I'm fine, you tell yourself looking into the mirror, but you're not fine. You splash your face with cold water trying to di uh, distract your tired thoughts. You feel worthless, you feel useless, your cheeks getting slightly blushy from water. You feel like crying, but stop. You have already cried yourself to sleep the night before, no more crying right now. Begrudgingly, you do your morning rituals. Okay, wash. Washing's good. Uh, if you were gone, would anyone even miss you? No! Someone would. <sighs> Does your presence even matter to the world? You keep giving away piece after piece after piece of yourself, hoping that all this giving will finally earn you a place in the structure of the universe. If you were to stop giving, would you still have worth in other people's eyes? Oh! You stop looking into the mirror, time for breakfast. Ah, that's so heartbreaking to me. We we focus so much of our self-worth on what we're able to give people, on what we can do. And, and I think that's where a lot of, like the innate competition it happens between people because our, our worth is built on on doing and so if someone else is doing more than you if, if something else can do if someone else can do something you can't like that's where the fight and the defensiveness comes from because if if someone else is doing more and our worth is based on what we're doing then what are we worth 
right? And and that's when you start asking, am, am I doing enough? Am I giving enough? Um, I've had those exact same questions. Um, it can be it can be so overwhelming um, when you're asking yourself, what is my place? Do I have a place? Um, also, just a quick check in if you're feeling a bit triggered or if this is overwhelming for you, please do not hesitate to stop watching my video. I know that's not something that YouTubers would normally say. Um, but this is a really serious topic and more than anything, I want my, my channel and, and on our interactions to be something that's safe as well. So if, if you're not feeling like this is for you today, I won't hold it against you to, to ha have another adventure, but I am very much dedicated to having discussions like these. So I'm, I'm going to keep going. Just make sure you're taking care of yourself. Okay. Uh, where, so we were in the bathroom. We just washed our face. We're looking in the mirror. So we're going to the kitchen, time for breakfast. A picture on the fridge draws your eye. It's you, your mom, and your sibling. The sight of it makes you pause for a second. You are suddenly getting sad. If you were to disappear, she would be so devastated. She would be. No one in this entire world loves you as much as she does. This thought, among others, has been the rock that anchored you away from the abyss. You look on the table and spot the shoddy remain of your dinner. Something draws your eye, a kitchen knife. This is hard. This is, this is actually really difficult for me as well. Um, I, uh, have several friends who deal with mental health. I've dealt with it in my life as well. Uh, and there's always such a pull between between things you know and things that your brain is telling you. Um, and the things, you know, with depression, OCD, anxiety, you know, bipolar, any, any given uh, mental illness, um, our feelings certainly are information and they do tell us... Uh, tell us things like it can let us know that, that we need help. It can let us know that there's unresolved things from our past. Uh, it can let, it can let us know lots of things, but it does that by conveying thoughts, um, that aren't true. Um, and so it can be hard because you can see, you know, with this character, uh, they can see, you know, a, a note from, or not a note, but a, a picture of them and their family, and they understand this truth uh, that they'd be devastated without this person uh, in their lives. But then they can also look at a knife and think entirely different thoughts um, about that knife. And uh, I think that's the tricky thing about mental health is there's constantly thoughts that are competing. Um, and it's, it's difficult uh, sometimes to differentiate uh, what thoughts to listen to. Um, so let's, let's keep going. You stare at the knife and a sudden thought crosses your mind. It would be so easy. But we are choosing to put the knife down. I think that's something that's very key is we can have thoughts, but we ultimately choose what we do. We choose what we do with, with the thoughts that we're having. We choose what to do um, when it comes to what thoughts we're going to act on. And that's something that can be empowering, right? So we're going to put it down. No, not today. You have the sudden urge to call your mother. She must still be asleep. She's always been a late riser. You wish you could tell her everything. You wish that so much. All these thoughts inside your head, you just want to hear. Uh, all these thoughts inside your head, you just want to hear it just once, that it gets easier. That there is a point to all of this, that what you are doing has meaning. Suddenly you don't want breakfast anymore. Okay, we can live. Living is good. Um, and... It's, it's hard. It's hard when you're really depressed. Um, 
because living living requires a lot of effort it requires exerting yourself it kind of it, it requires you to um to create an answer for yourself of why you need to keep living uh and that's exhausting because uh, i think uh when you're depressed you want more than anything for that answer to come to you and for it to be so clear and perfect but living is much more of a wrestle and with depression you have to choose to make the wrestle to find out why you need to live and that can be such a hard fight when you're in the middle of mental illness um okay so we're living <laughs> i'm assuming this is like living room but i i like the idea that it's like you're choosing to live <laughs> um okay you cross into the living room resting on the couch is your dog yeah we have a dog that can do so much <laughs> uh Resting on the couch is your dog who sleeps soundly. If not for you, at least do it for the dog. Live today for your dog. He needs you. If you were gone, who would take care of him? The dog's been by your side ever since it was a pup. You're his whole world. In his eyes, you are the longest living creature in existence. Before the dog gets old, you'd have barely aged. I, it is really profound to me um, how we can find purpose in little things. And I think that's something that's really key with depression uh, is it's really little things that keep you going. Um, something like a dog or plants uh, are huge uh, for that exact reason. Okay, we are approaching the dog. I'm so excited we're approaching this dog. I see the word pet. I'm going to read the sentence before I, I pet this dog, but I just want to pet it right off the bat. Uh, you approach the couch and take a seat. The dog finally senses your presence and wags his tail happy. You extend your hand. We get to pet the dog. The dog happily puts his head on your lap. Your fingers run smoothly through his fur and you enjoy the slight motion of his wagging tail. You are my best friend. I hope you know that. And there's two little paw prints. The thing about your thoughts is that you can't really trust them anymore. Would you be friends with someone who told you to take your own life? Would you still talk to them? The thing is, you can't really stop talking to yourself, and if you aren't going to be your own friend, who is? A true friend would never try and sabotage you. The dog gets up and runs towards the back door. You follow shortly. Mm, that's so heartbreaking to me. Again, it's, it's this wrestle that you have to constantly engage in, and that's what's so tiring. I mean, we, we think about dealing with other people. And, and I, I love people. I genuinely feel optimistic um, when I try to interact with other people around me. I believe that people are good, uh, but it can be exhausting. Um, I've worked in customer service <laughs> and it's, it's so exhausting to talk to people when there's constantly a conflict between you. So imagine that constantly when you're trying to engage, um, in, in a relationship with yourself internally, whether by feeling, thought, idea, etc., you constantly feel like you can't trust yourself, like you're constantly at war inside of you. And it's so difficult. I can't, I can't describe that difficulty enough. Um, but we've got a dog. <laughs> We're living for this dog. Um, and we're going to go towards the back door. We follow. We're headed to the garden. We're headed to the garden. You finally step outside. The cold morning air pinches your skin. Your bare feet against the stone garden path. For some reason, it makes you feel alive. The sun is barely visible on the horizon. You take a deep breath and gaze on the beautiful garden in front of you. So many flowers, so many blooms. You take one into your hand and smell it. The perfume of dreams. Wow, 
the perfume of dreams. A promise of tomorrow, baby steps, that's it. One step, step after the other. You'll get there. That's what dad used to say. That's what dad used to say. After all, the journey matters as much as the destination. Tomorrow will be better, I promise. It gets easier. You'll just have to wait and see. So it looks like the the dad passed away. And I wonder if his he said that his he's had thoughts like this for years now. Um so that could either mean that it it already was a thing when his dad was alive and maybe the dad passing away was like a catalyst for it becoming even worse. Um or maybe that was the thing that that triggered it. I think what I really like kind of about this ending um, is is that, you know, it, it was really him kind of step after step making small choices throughout the day. You know, this morning, I should say, just small decisions throughout this morning that got him to a place where he could get outside. And even just being outside was enough for him to to feel the sun and just to have this moment of, okay, I'm feeling alive right now. You know, even if I, if, even if I start feeling depressed again, I know that this moment, that this feeling exists and that I can work to this moment again. And, and again, depression, uh, it really is a fight in the way that you're fighting for those moments of feeling the sun, feeling alive, feeling like, you know, the, the perfume of dreams. <laughs> Uh, but really, though, smelling flowers and, and being with your dog outside in a garden, all of those things, like maybe after this, he'll go inside and he will decide to call his mom or, or a friend or, or someone, you know, and maybe him feeling like his dog depends on him is the start of, well, maybe my friends also depend on me. Maybe my family also depends on me. You know, all of all of these things are, are baby steps. And again, um, I can't emphasize the suffering uh, that depression can, can cause someone. Um, but at the same time, I'll also emphasize uh, it does get better. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get a little emotional while I say it. it it gets better. Um, and it's, it's a fight, but it's a, it's a fight worth fighting for. You know, that little end bit right there, the journey matters as much as the destination. Uh, if, if you're fighting to understand what your purpose is and you're, if, and you're choosing to keep going, uh, that purpose will develop over time. It's not, purpose isn't something you you arrive at necessarily but it's something that you learn about over time and it it takes each day both the good ones and the bad ones um so yeah if if you are suffering from mental illness um if you are dealing with heartbreak if you uh, are facing chronic illness uh disease etc um, if you are, are having a hard time as a human being, I genuinely, I genuinely wish you well. Uh, and I hope that you'll keep going because you do matter. Even just being here with me on this video, this matters. And you're making a difference to me and I hope, I hope I can make a difference to you. So I'll see you next time.